my mom is is one of the strongest people I've ever known. I know that if I am in need, my mother is going to drop everything she's doing and come running. Highly blessed and favored to to have her in my life, and uh, we got 52 years, and I'm hoping for quite a few more. When, when we were children, um, she was very involved in the community, and, and, and I, I think I, didn't, I really appreciate it as much as dad, but the causes that she took on were extremely There's so many important. things that she's taught me, but I think that love and kindness and generosity. was supporting children who were, whether they realize it or not, in some of the darkest hours. Uh, she supported women who were going through some of the most traumatic moments of their lives. I'm Evelyn Johnson. I was born in 1946. I am 72 years old. This November, I'll be 73. I worked uh, at uh, Child Enrichment. I've worked for Rape Crisis Sexual Assault Services. I'm not sure other I, than how I, we actually met. I think, if I remember right, uh, what was her name? Mary Snyder. Mary Snyder. She introduced us in the lunchroom. Don't swing. <laughs> okay, sorry. I met my husband at Butler High School. My uh, His senior year, my freshman year, have two wonderful children and three really wonderful grandchildren. And we've lived in Augusta for most of our lives. On my 16th birthday, he asked me for a date. And uh, he picked me up in his, what year was that car? 55 Chevrolet. 55 Chevrolet. And it had these naked girls on it in, in this kind of pose. On the hubcaps. And he was all worried somebody was going to steal his hubcaps while we were in the movie theater. <laughs> At that time, and for a long time after that, even up to after we were married, I had no concept of the hell she had lived in as a child. My stepfather molested me when I was in the third grade. I was just turning eight years old. Uh, it continued for many years. Because of it, I was, like most children who've been molested, very uh, secretive, very withdrawn, not a lot of friends. I used to dream really terrible dreams there was one really vivid one that I dreamed over and over where I was walking through a cemetery and he was in a, in a crypt and he pushed the top back and he said, I'll never leave you alone. And I remember waking up and my husband comforting me because I wouldn't be able to get my breath. We finally ended up at one point, uh, we found a psychiatrist from our church that she spent six years with him. She knew that she was she did not want to be the person that her growing up had the potential to make her to be. And she wanted to do something about it. And she went and got help. She went to therapy. But the part that helped the most was when she started working with these organizations supporting other people who had been through the same stuff she had been through. Uh, she, uh, you know, she used to work uh, the helpline, and this was back before cell phones and things of that nature, so there would be a few nights a month where she would sit up all night by the telephone and just wait for people to call for, for whatever reason. And, and sometimes it was someone who was truly in crisis and she needed to help them, and sometimes it was someone who just needed a kind ear. I worked there, for volunteered there for several years, and then 
my boss, Ann Henry, uh, went to rape crisis at University Hospital and asked me to go with her, and I did. And uh, that was how I got involved with rape victims and uh, on, a, on a full-time basis. I'm Evelyn Johnson. I've been a rape crisis advocate for approximately four years now. I started with the helpline. When uh, they began to have a rape crisis, I knew that that's what I wanted to do was able to help a lot of people, to refer them to other places that they would get the help they need. Poor adjustment. It's essential that a victim have the support of an objective, knowledgeable, non-judgmental advocate. If you are abused, it's important to know that it's not your fault and you can get out of it. If you tell someone, the main reason that people don't tell is the guilt and the shame. And the thing is, if you tell someone and they don't do anything, tell somebody else. A lot of people would take what she went through and become the victim and, oh poor pitiful me, and, and just play the victim the rest of their lives. But she didn't want to do that. She wanted to take that and not only make herself better, but make other people better. It was a thing for her at that time, which uh, I felt like brought a lot of healing to her because uh, as she worked with these people, she grew a lot uh, in her personal life. I want to thank God, first of all, for sending me to the right psychiatrist. I want to thank all the people who shared their stories with me. I want to thank my husband and my family for putting up with me having to get up in the middle of the night, two and three and four o'clock in the morning, and they wouldn't know when I was coming home. And Henry for having faith in me and encouraging me. And just, and just all the people that have touched my life and allowed me to touch theirs. Uh, I still have a few of the women that I counseled over the years that are still friends that I hear from on Facebook and I, I hear from periodically. I get a phone call and they catch me up on their life. <laughs>